Good evening and a very warm welcome to this celebration of Mass here at Sacred Heart Church in Edinburgh. On the 12th of March 1977, Father Rutilio Grande, who is a Jesuit, Manuel Sorzano and Nelson Lemus, who were assistants in the parish, were murdered by the death squads of the military junta. We also are remembering today Cosme Spesotto, who was a Franciscan priest who was shot on the 14th of June 1980, also for speaking out against the military junta in favour of the poor and the marginalised. And on behalf of the whole church in El Salvador, in five hours, Cardinal Chavez will declare these four martyrs blessed of the church, a recognition of their lives of faith and their violent deaths following Jesus Christ. And so tonight, we gather as the Catholic Christian community in this corner of the world. And it is fitting and that we are delighted to welcome our own bishop, Archbishop Leo Cushley, to lead us in this Mass of Thanksgiving to celebrate the unity of the Church, for in the midst of life we are in death. Brother, and let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you are the, the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, consisting of men, women and children old enough to understand. This was the first day of the seventh month. On the square before the water gate, 
in the presence of the men and women and children old enough to understand, he read from the book from early morning till noon. All the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the scribe, stood on a wooden dais erected for the purpose. In full view of all the people, since he stood higher than all the people, Ezra opened the book, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people raised their hands and answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and face to the ground, prostrated themselves before the Lord. And Ezra read from the law of God, translating and giving the sense so that the people understood what was read. Then Nehemiah, his excellency, and Ezra, priest and scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, this day is sacred to the Lord your God. Do not be mournful, do not weep. For the people were all in tears as they listened to the word of the Lord. He then said, Go, eat the fat, drink the sweet wine, and send a portion to the man who has nothing prepared ready. For this day is sacred to our Lord. Do not be sad. The joy of the Lord is your stronghold. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Just as the human body, though it is made up of many parts, is a single unit because all these parts, though many, make one body. So it is with Christ. In the one Spirit, we were all baptized, Jews as well as Greeks, slaves as well as citizens, and one Spirit was given to us all to drink. Nor is the body to be identified with any one of its many parts. Now you together are Christ's body, but each of you is a different part of it. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Seeing that many others have undertaken to draw up accounts of the events that have taken place among us, exactly as these were handed down to us by those who from the outset were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, I, in my turn, after carefully going over the whole story from the beginning, have decided to write an ordered account for you, Theophilus, so that Your Excellency may learn how well-founded the teaching is that you have received. Jesus, with the power of the Spirit in Him, returned to Galilee, and His reputation spread throughout the countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as he usually did. He stood up to read, and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, the Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favor. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant, and sat down and all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. The Gospel of the Lord.
we here in this Jesuit church give thanks to God for the beatification of our Jesuit, Father Rutilio Grandi, and his two parishioners, Nelson and Manuel, martyred together on March the 12th, 1977, in El Salvador. We recognize also Fray Cosme Spesotto, an Italian Franciscan missionary killed as he began Mass there in June 1980. The beatification ceremony, as we heard, is taking place in the Cathedral of San Salvador, St. Oscar Romero's own cathedral, later this evening. These are fellow Christians who were murdered in hatred of the faith. Let us meet Rutilio the Jesuit, and then secondly, Rutilio the pastor, and then third, Rutilio the friend and inspiration of St. Oscar Romero. The Jesuit Rutilio unusually was ministering in his home district. He, like every Jesuit, had already heard the call of Christ the King in the spiritual exercises, the long retreat. These spiritual exercises test your call to mission. The vocation is tried and affirmed in the intense prayer of the exercises. Your initial orientation is purified and then confirmed, and then set free as far as possible from disordered attachments. It's deepened as you place yourself, to use Ignatius' own words, under the banner of the cross. You pray for an inner freedom to be sent anywhere. Think of Saint Francis Xavier, Think of our own St. John Ogilvy. Grandi walked the same pathway of prayer like all the other Jesuits. He suffered from poor mental and physical health and frequent bouts of depression and self-doubt. But his passion for ministry transcended all that. Most Jesuits in El Salvador at the time were committed to university level education, academic research, and formation. Grandi did serve for a time at the seminary. The Jesuits at a worldwide meeting or general congregation in 1975 had discerned that the order's mission was, and I quote, the service of faith of which the promotion of justice is an absolute requirement. Unlike most other Salvadorian Jesuits then, Grandi went out into the village alongside the poorest. Grandi as pastor. Tillo, as he was affectionately known to all, was a pastor. He died a pastor, driving with his companions, Nelson and Manuel, to celebrate a novena mass when the soldiers ambushed them. It was said of St. Ignatius that he loved the big cities, but Grande was drawn to leave the city for a mission to the poorest and the most neglected areas. He was excited, he was energized by what the Second Vatican Council and the Latin American bishops and the Jesuits worldwide had discerned. He knew from personal experience the tough life of the campesinos, their hard labor for the co in the coffee and sugarcane fields, their struggle for land and for a decent life. He learned that most of the productive land was owned by about 2% of the population. But he had also learned that the gospel speaks to such injustice, that to follow Christ did not mean passively accepting poverty and oppression as somehow the will of God to be accepted. Grandi and his team developed ways of encouraging them to challenge their situation, reading the signs of the times through the eyes of faith. When Grandi was installed as a new pastor in Aguilares in 1972, he was determined to be a pastor among the oppressed, shaped by the Second Vatican Council's rediscovery of the church as the people of God, a community, not a hierarchy, committed to what the Council named as the preferential option for the poor. 
We just heard in today's Gospel for this Sunday how Jesus launched his own ministry by citing those words of Isaiah about bringing good news to the poor, setting the downtrodden free, and proclaiming the Lord's year of favour. Tilo, Father Rutilio, was murdered for doing that. But as Archbishop and now Saint Oscar Romero preached at his funeral mass on March the 14th, 1977, Grandi became a pastor to the peasants, and again I quote, not only out of a revolutionary inspiration, but as an inspiration of love. His love for the people whom he served led to his martyrdom. Rutilio Grandi, the great friend and inspiration of Oscar Romero. Pope Francis has said that the great miracle of Rutilio Grandi was Archbishop Romero. And when the quiet, shy Romero had returned from Rome and been made a bishop, that country's 14 leading rich families were relieved. They had a tame cleric, they thought, untainted by all this new theological and pastoral thinking. Grande and Romero had become close friends, despite the very different receptions of what was flowing from Vatican II. Bishop Romero was one of many who disapproved of how Rutilio was encouraging the seminarians out of the building and into the villages. But only two weeks after Oscar became Archbishop of San Salvador, Tilo, Nelson and Manuel were driving to a Novena Mass at El Paisnal, Tilo's birthplace. Intercepted by the state security forces, they met a hail of bullets. Archbishop Oscar came to the spot as soon as he heard. He later said that when he saw the bullet-ridden corpses of his friend and the two parishioners, he knew that if they had done this to Rutilio, it would be his path too. It's not quite right to see here the moment of Oscar's conversion to the option for the poor, because that had been growing in him for some time. But he knew that this moment was its confirmation. Rutilio Grande will shortly be named Blessed, the same as his two lay friends. They have names and faces too. He and they are an inspiration to all who do pastoral ministry in the church. Clergy, catechists, young activists, community organizers. Here is an image, a symbol of the church as the people of God. We are setting out on a pathway too, as we heard last Sunday and this week, the pathway of synodality, the largest ever listening exercise in the church and indeed in human history. Once again, we are asked, we are called to read the signs of the times with the eyes of faith. May the prayers of Blessed Manuel Blessed Nelson, Blessed Rutilio, and Blessed Cosme, and of St. Oscar Romero, support us as we try to be the people that God wants us to be. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring our prayers before God our Father, that the words spoken by our mouths and the thoughts of our hearts may find favour in the Lord's sight, for he is our rescuer and our rock. Let us pray that we may bring good news to the poor and to captives. By the generous giving of our time and resources, and by our advocacy on behalf of the marginalised in society. Lord, in your mercy. Today, as we mark the beatification of Rutilio Grandi and his companions, let us pray for all those who speak out in the cause of justice and right. May they be courageous in their words and actions and protected by the spirit of God's truth. Lord, in your mercy, By the witness of our own lives, may we proclaim the Lord's year of favour to all men and women. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for our own intentions. Lord, in your mercy. Father, in your mercy, with the intercession of blessed Rutilio and his companions, grant us all that we ask you in faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather our people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, blessed Rutilio Grandi, blessed Nelson Lemos, and blessed Manuel Solorzano, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Leo our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Look toward the Lord and be radiant, that your faces not be abashed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to be seated just for a moment, please. Thank you to all those who attended the Synod meetings this week. There is one more opportunity left to get involved in this sharing of experience of the church so that together we can discern the future of the church, and that is after the 8 o'clock Mass tomorrow evening. It's a particular gathering for young adults, but everybody would be very welcome, and it's in the uh, Lauriston Hall next door. We will then be reporting back the responses, um, both displaying them at the back of the church and in a re written report, which will go through to the diocese and the deanery synods, and also here uh, to you in the newsletter. We're still looking for volunteers to count the Sunday collection, a nice thing to be able to do. We need help for about an hour on a Monday morning once a month, so if you could help with that, please do email the church office. A new book club is beginning from the Edinburgh Jesuit Centre, and that starts on the 15th of February, gives you plenty of time to get the book and to begin reading, and it will meet online for six Tuesdays. Our first book is a contemporary version by Glasgow poet A.B. Jackson of the 9th century uh, Celtic tale, the, Vo the Voyage of St. Brendan. Everybody is most welcome, and more details are in the newsletter and on the Parish in Edinburgh Jesuit Centre websites. Thank you very much indeed, so many of you um, who are visitors to the church for joining us this evening. You're most welcome. It's wonderful to be able to celebrate um, this occasion of the beatification of Rutilio Grande and his companions with you. And again, a very big thank you to Archbishop Cushley for joining us and presiding at this Mass. When we get to the very end of the Mass, we're going to go down before this painting and we're just going to say a prayer there before we finish. And we would encourage you to come and see this painting, which was being done by um, René de los Reyes, who is um, a Jesuit in Glasgow. Um, there are also some prayer cards there. Please do take one or two, give them to your friends. Please do take those with you. Everybody who read and played and did everything else that has made this celebration so good. Please, as always, take a copy of the newsletter home with you. So let us stand for the blessing. Dear friends, just before the final blessing, I just want to thank Father Adrian, Father Roger, Father David for his very moving and inspiring words. I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to join you for this. Um, it, I won't go on, but it, it reminds me of a, a chapter in my own life too, when I knew a number of people who were murdered for hatred, hatred of the faith. And I'm thinking about them now and praying for them. And so I'm in a bit of a turmoil myself think, hearing about this um, because I've seen some of this for myself and it's very powerful and it's very moving to see the faith lived out in this way and people who are prepared to put themselves in harm's way for, for Christ and for love of Christ's people. So I am very pleased to have been able to join you for this this evening. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Lord God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you call us to your service, though you know how weak we are. 
Help us to be good soldiers of Christ under the banner of his cross. Bring to perfection the work you have begun in St. Ignatius and so many of his followers now acclaimed as saints and blessed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed be you, your Thank mm-hmm. you.